our intentions for today. The Feast of St. Louis, King of France, we'll speak about him during our homily, is a prayer for Jan Astrub, requested by Maz A.M. Mazawa. We also pray a prayer of thanksgiving to St. Pellegrin, one of our patrons here in the church. I'd also like to pray for uh, Bishop Reed, a friend of mine from Boston TV. He was ordained bishop yesterday, and many years ago, um, about five years ago, Saint, on the Feast of St. Bartholomew. Today I pray also for the repose of the soul of a friend of mine, Bishop Tommy Donato, who passed away a few years ago, young age. Prayer of thanksgiving to St. Pellegrin for the healing of Jenny. Prayer of thanksgiving to Padre Pio and St. Therese of Lisieux and your intentions. Our first reading is from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, this is the fasting that I seek, releasing those who are subjected, untying the throngs of the yoke, setting free the oppressed, breaking every yoke, sharing your bread with the hungry, sheltering the oppressed and the homeless, clothing the naked when you see them, and not turn your back on your own. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your wound shall quickly be healed. Your vindication shall go before you, and the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove from your midst oppression, false accusations, malicious speech, if you bestow your bread on the hungry and satisfy the afflicted, then light shall rise for you in the darkness, and the gloom shall become for you like midday. Then the Lord will guide you always and give you plenty, even on a parched land. He will renew your strength, and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring whose water never fails. The word of the Lord. Blessed is the person who fears the Lord. Blessed is the person who fears the Lord. Blessed the person who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commands. His prosperity shall be mighty upon the earth. The upright generation shall be blessed. Blessed is the person who fears the Lord. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. His generosity shall endure forever. Light shines through the darkness for the upright. He is gracious and merciful and just. Blessed the person who fears the Lord. Well for the man who is gracious and lends, who conducts his affairs with justice. He shall never be moved. The just man shall be an everlasting remembrance. Blessed is man who fears the Lord. An evil report he shall not fear. His heart is firm, trusting in the Lord. His heart is steadfast. He shall not fear till he looks down upon his foes. Blessed is the person who fears the Lord. Lavishly he gives to the poor. His generosity shall endure forever. His horn shall be exalted to glory. Blessed is the person who fears the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. I give you a new commandment, love one another as I have loved you. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. 
When the Pharisees had heard that Jesus silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a scholar of the law, testing Jesus by asking, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest, and the first commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the teachings of the prophets depend on these commandments. The Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. When I was a child, I was so grateful that my name was Louis because I was named after my grandfather, Luciano. I often wished my name was Luciano and I never decided to change it because that's the name my parents chose for me. Luciano was my grandfather, my mother's father, and going back to our Sicilian roots, I was very close to him. There's a story, this has nothing to do with St. Louis, but the name is there. There's a story, the family stories. I, I was always with him, and, and he lived right around the corner, you know, city living, so we, I could walk to his house anytime. And there are pictures of me at table with him, and I was on like a high chair, and he was so proud of how much I could eat. I, I was a porker, let me tell you. Um, there's a picture of me with my belly, I'm a little baby now, on the top of the high chair table, proudest peacock next to my grandfather, holding up the fork of pasta, spaghetti. Um, that's Luciano, very, very important in my life, and I pray for him today, as the other intentions we've mentioned before. St. Louis, King of France, he did something different. He, he really took seriously in those days, they called it a divine right. When a king was anointed at his coronation, the belief, the faith was, he was anointed by God to do what he's doing. Good, bad, or indifferent kind of guy, he was still anointed by God. And that gave them a kind of process of grandiosity or humility. And in the case of St. Louis, King of France, great humility. Great father, 11 kids. Blanche was his mother, and she also was a very important influence on his life. He grew up faithful, religious, spiritual. He was a third order Franciscan, and really is the patron of third order Franciscans. And for those of you who are not familiar with that, they're people, lay people, who take the, the, the vows of St. Francis in their own lives. Obviously, in his case, celibacy wasn't one of them because he was a married man. But he took the vows of very seriously to love the poor and, and be very faithful to the church. In his time, when he became king, he did something that you and I are familiar with because it happened in Rome a few years ago and continues to happen. He invites 12 beggars every Friday to his table. People of the streets to eat with them. So he replicated the Last Supper every time he ate with these people. He gave a lot of his time and energy to hospitals, which were almost unheard of, and hospices and homes, for, especially for the lepers. You figure, the worst of the worst illnesses then. But he cared for them because he was commissioned by God to be a king of these people by divine right and loyal and service to his people. Eventually, the Pope called for crusades. Now, the crusades lasted a good 200 years, periodically, many, many, there were nine crusades, I believe. He led one, and as a result, went to Tunis and stayed there for a while. And you know, when you leave home, go on vacation, send a card, you send a text, 
He had no such thing. He would send letters back home, but that was about it that would get there eventually. And during the time there, he developed a great faith in Christ's passion, especially the freedom of Jerusalem and the Holy Land, the freedom from the control of the Muslims. And that was a great war going on through that period and in that part of the world for many years. Eventually, he's credited with looking for relics associated with Jesus and he comes across what had been venerated as the crown of thorns. So sometimes when you see St. Louis, King of France, he usually has a pillow in his hand, and on that pillow is the crown of thorns in the memory of Jesus. He comes back to France and builds, if you've ever been to France, you know it. If you haven't, let it be the first place you go. When you do go there in Paris, Saint-Chapelle, the Holy Chapel, floor to ceiling, magnificent stained glass windows. Not a big place, probably the size of this church, but so magnificent. And when you're in it, you feel like you're in a reliquary, an object that holds sacred items. And that's the idea he, that was in his head. He wanted this Saint Chapelle, this holy chapel, to be a reliquary to the items of the crucifixion of Jesus. And so he built it, and it is still there going strong. He went back eventually, 1400s, to the Holy Land again, and then his troops was very unsuccessful. They all came down with the plague, and he died from that there in, in the, the Holy Land. Saint Louis, King of France. Someone who was a just ruler in our country, our state, and our city, looking to just rulers is so important. Someone who cared for the poor and cared for people right across his society. He set up a system in his government offices where witnesses had to be called. Now, you, it's funny for us to think, you know, that's, that was new. It had to be new somewhere, right? Because in the Middle Ages, if you and I had a, a, a battle with each other, a, a, a disagreement, we just went to war or we dueled. Well, he ended that in his country and said, if you have an issue with another person, come to court, bring your witnesses, make your case. Justice was important because don't forget he was representing God to his people. Our leaders today still, whether they agree with it or not, represent God governing their people with justice and peace and equality. He was a great man of justice, a great man of the family. And I don't know his miracles. Just having me named after him is one of the miracles. But the miracles that he gives us are our Christian lives and, and, and the lives that we live as Christians. Looking to someone like that who is high and noble, but who is humble and walked the earth with us. And who does that reflect? Jesus Christ himself. So no matter what our role is, family, government, politics, church, we are still called as Christians to emulate Jesus Christ to give those who are on the outskirts of society respect and love, to feed them, clothe them. And we as a parish do it well with our charities, but there's always room for more, for growth. There's always room for a little more concern. When we vote, the same thing. Take the political system very seriously. And we are called and challenged, I think, to vote for people who represent I want to put quotes around it, God. Now, no, no political person represents God authentically, but our leaders should re reflect our faith. And we are Americans, so we have the right to declare our faith in the polling booth. For people who stand up for justice, who, who, who improve society, who don't forget the marginalized, who say all people are equal, who represent 
the white, the brown, the black, and every other member of our such a diverse community of the United States. So leadership next to godliness is very important for the Christian. Pray for your leaders. Vote for those that in conscience you believe are doing God's will. And look to St. Louis, King of France, as a, as a representative of our divine right to do what is just.